This video examines parallel box plots and in fact gets us to construct parallel box plots and makes comparisons. The data we have available here is the mean verbal and mean math score for the SATs for the college bound students in America. You can see there are scores from both the verbal and maths for several states and our first task is to draw a parallel box and whiskers plot for the data. Here's our data entered under the headings of verbal and maths. We wish to construct a plot, a graph. Our data is present. Down the bottom we'll select our math data first of all. And at this point we'll go to the menu and tell it to go to plot type of box plot. So there's our first box plot and we notice here there is an outlier in our data set. We now, however, that only presents half of our data. We need the verbal information as well. So we go to menu, plot property, and we want to add an x variable. So we want to add to our plot a verbal. So now we have maths and verbal both present. OK, let's analyze this data. And the type of questions we need to ask ourselves are, first of all, let's examine the central tendencies. Well, in this case, both sets have identical median scores of 539. You can see here from our calculator screen, 539, 539. So that's one clear observation. The second comparison we can make is that of variation or spread within the data. So we can look at range or interquartile range as a numerical measure of this spread. You can see here from the maths, from 515 to a value of 545, or all the way to 570, is much less than 498 to 575. And so we can say that the range is definitely greater for verbal at 77 compared to a value of 55. If we were to look at the interquartile range, we're running from 525 for the maths to an upper quartile of 542. The verbal has a lower quartile, quartile 1 of 523, and an upper quartile, quartile 3 of 547. So once again, the interquartile range of 24 for verbal scores is greater than the interquartile range of 17 for math scores. So both the range and interquartile values demonstrate the verbal scores have a far larger spread. Our third comparison is that of the shape. If we look at our data, we can see here that whilst the uh, upper 25 and lower 25 verbal, verbal sorry, um, looks very similar, you can see here that there definitely is with this 25 to 50 quartile in both the verbal and the maths a greater amount of data. This is definitely negatively skewed in both sets. Our next comparison is looking at the quartiles. Sometimes you can find some interesting information with the quartiles. And what I've written here is that the bottom 25% of scores from the verbal test have roughly double the range of the bottom 25% from the maths test. So here, the bottom 25% from Q1 to the minimum value for verbal has quite a large variation, whereas the bottom 25, the Q1 to minimum for maths, only has half the variation. The other thing you can notice here is that if you were to accept or exempt the top um, score for maths, which is, as you can see, an outlier, we can clearly see that the top 25% scores of the verbal scores on the test were indeed higher than any other score in the maths test. Finally, we can look at some unusual features, and we can see that the math score of 570 was identified as an outlier, and that's clearly stated here with the math scores with the circle at 570. We can check that. We see the interquartile range for maths was 17, and the upper quartile, or Q3, was 542. So to test the outer limit, or what we call the outer outlier limits, or gates for mathematics, we take the upper quartile and we add 1.5 multiplied by the interquartile range. And we find that the limit for outliers, for the upper limit, is 567.5, a score of 567.5. Well, the math score, as we know, is 570, which is greater than the outlier limit, and so it is classified as an outlier.